Hello friends, welcome back. A very good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are watching this video from. So we are on part 12 now uh, on the App Open Cloud journey. Today we'll be uncovering another interesting topic and that is the App of Code Exit for CDS View. So what I'm planning is to segment this discussion in three parts. So in the introduction or you know kind of architectural discussion, we'll be just covering like what uh, this ABAP code exit is all about and why do we need it. Secondly, we'll just uncover uh, the different usage where these concepts can be implemented. Finally, we'll just check if any limitations there while we'll incorporating or trying to implement this concept uh, in some you know, real example. So that pretty much uh, the introduction part and then move into our implementation. So here what we'll do, we'll implement uh, this concept in our CDS, what we have built already uh, in earlier tutorial, that is our travel and booking, you know, CDS view. And of course, we'll implement in App Open Cloud. Okay. So I think that will be pretty good that we can explore the same in uh, one cloud. And of course, the last part should be execution kind of a testing and validate like how things are working. So I hope that discussion, this discussion will be also helpful and uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, so stay tuned till the end and let's start without much wasting the time. So let's quickly check out the uh, what and why part. I mean, what is this above code uh, exit all, all about? So it is simply a kind of an, an option or maybe I should say like there are a number of reasons when you can uh, come across certain business requirement and it asks about uh, showing some information uh, in the UI uh, and that information it's all about calculated or I mean at the during the runtime and it doesn't have any uh, existence to your persistence database table. Uh, I mean, at the runtime when the, your CDS is being consumed uh, by your Fury application, that time itself, uh, the views uh, will, you know, uh, will call your custom logic, some custom class. And there you have all sort of logics you have embedded, which will be used for calculating uh, certain field details. Okay. And that details eventually will uh, planning to render it to the UI. So that's a mechanism of attaching a custom class is basically we call it as a have a code exit for our CDS because we have an option or hook where we can uh, do our things differently uh, than the normal CDS syntax and we can attach our own custom app logic. It's a fantastic uh, option that SAP has offered and uh, why of course as I told it's a business requirement it come up and then probably you can fit on uh, with this concept. Now coming to uh, this uh, particular terminology that SAP calling this uh, new fields, they are calling it as a virtual element. I, so this is what actually uh, we are going to deal with today. Now coming to usage part, uh, usage part is pretty much uh, three things that SAP is currently offering and that is a calculated as I explained just now, like how the calculation logic you can put into your custom class and overall the field values will be derived. Also. You have some option called sorting and the last but not the least and that is your filtering okay so these are the three contexts where this concept can be used let's now discuss about the limitations so for the limitations the first one is like above 752 release with service pack uh, 5 i think onwards uh, you know this Feature is available um, in ABAP uh, on cloud as of now at this current date I'm doing a video recording. SAP is not offering any feature support for sorting and filtering. Okay. So not available for wrap service. Uh, simply wrap or maybe ABAP on cloud for simplicity. Okay. This is not available yet. So definitely you can anticipate. Uh, we'll be discussing only the first context that is a calculated option. Great. Uh, the next thing is this virtual element uh, cannot be, uh, you know, uh, cannot be a key field. Good. The last one, probably uh, this, uh, if you use a CDS view in your select query, let's say, okay, select query. 
uh, then you cannot you know if you just you know have this field fetched uh, the value will be empty will be initial let's say uh, okay so a uh, for for virtual element field and eml uh, i believe that's an entity manipulation language you have heard about so in eml if you just you know try to fetch information from business object uh, you can't uh, do it because uh, you don't have any clarity i mean eml doesn't have any visibility okay against this uh, virtual element so that pretty much are the restrictions or maybe i call it a limitations okay but that's okay we can still uh, can move uh, move ahead with implementing this topic in our weapon cloud and uh, hopefully it will be a fantastic experience let's see so where the virtual element will fit on of course in our projection layer okay so i'm just calling it a name as virtual element shortly and this virtual element will be linked to our uh, in the projection view so what happens like uh, i am calling it this virtual element should be calculated anyways this uh, calculation logic will be attached with some concept or the syntax uh, let's say above then colon uh, then you have to give your custom class jetcl uh, xyz right so that pretty much let's see your uh, custom class and that will hook on uh, with this virtual uh, field or element that you have placed into your consumption view and this uh, virtual class uh, will have will contain your uh, custom logic okay so that pretty much i believe you can you have already understood and of course what are the places we have to do we have to just add on this uh, uh, annotations layer uh, we have to attach this uh, a virtual element using some uh, old data uh, sorry i mean object model annotations uh, in our consumption view and this annotations whatever will be using it that is dependent on your virtual element related okay it's nothing to do with your ui annotations so ui annotation for this specific virtual element that we will be using that we have to keep it over here so we have to change basically metadata extension as well the consumption view as we will create a custom class where we'll put our logic so there are the three things that we are going to do then then we are all set so let's uh, check now the implementation part so now to start with implementing the concept let's take out uh, take up an example application that we already built as a travel and booking application and uh, i believe you also have this application with you right now so if we just get into this travel detail page uh, let's say I would like to create a new uh, field uh, calling it as a travel duration and where I'll just uh, show the difference between my start date and end date okay and I'll just show it uh, this uh, I know this pretty much simple logic uh, because my intention is uh, just to tell like how to hook up your custom uh, classes and definitely in real business uh, scenario it will be more complicated but still it holds true for our case as well like we will be like you know, to share this travel duration because that field is not available in our backend persistence table. Okay, so let's see how to do that. So to get into, so this is the, you know, application or, you know, CDS view that we created. This is our travel uh, consumption view because we have to put our virtual element at the consumption view layer. And where I can put it, let's say over here, I want to put something like uh, what you have to do, you have to put some annotations, object data model, okay. So you have to do virtual element calculated by, okay. So that you have to put and you have to write here above colon your class. Let's say I'm calling it jetctl, jetcl underscore travel duration i think jetc jetcl travel makes sense and then we'll be doing something called virtual and let's the field name i'm calling it as a duration and i'm using a type of let's say it is a two okay that pretty much i'm planning to do and i can activate it fine it will be activated uh, and uh, now we have to create a class for that so you can go to our class you can create a new class like say jetcl underscore travel 
let's say my travel duration uh, class and uh, okay i have to put something else in that case travel duration let's say for example then obviously we have to rename the class in our cds that's okay we can do it so this is what i'm interested it will be created if we just go over here and jet sail travel let's say put duration okay make sure you put all caps and activate it so now this is the class so we have to first start with something called interfaces because we have to link our saddle class and you can see something only elements exit calculation elements read interfaces available above on cloud so of course some warning and it says like to add two implementations so one implementation is calculate and another is get calculation info anyway so let's activate this first and once it's activated what we need to do we can just loop at some table like original data let's say we are using something called original end loop and what we are interested the duration field right so should be duration is not available okay so probably we are we actually have to do something like data lt original data it's a local table type standard table of the view which we are dealing with because jc travel u is actually the thing z underscore c underscore travel underscore u so that is our consumption view okay so this one table let's de first declare then what we have to do is instead of it original uh, we have to basically loop on this table and we can just cut this out and put something like here lt original data is equal to corresponding and this table so that means the data we are just taking into a similar uh, table type of our consumption view and definitely we have added the duration field over here so uh, so definitely now i will be able to get this duration field hopefully yes now it is and what we want is uh, this should have some sorry again i'm doing something wrong i need this one on, only so it should have something called end it right so end it and again simple like begin date very simple calculation now let's activate it okay so this particular calculation method uh, we have just changed the duration in our local table but we have to pass back the changes to the you know uh, actual table where you have to have those duration value filled in so that it can be rendering over the ui right so that table is basically start with city that is a change calculated data and that again we have to fill back with this lt original data so we can just keep it corresponding again that's it so once we are done with it 
uh, some problem yes to just remove the space and click on activate so now what happened like the calculate uh, method we have created and we for this particular case we don't need a gate calculation info or this method is required in case you are handling a certain specific logic based on based on you know uh, the element let's say for example i want to do something for the duration only so that do, in, during the duration uh, once the duration elements i'm getting uh, some values i need to you know pass back to my calculate method so in that case you can you know take those kind of uh, measure and get calculation info and any information you need to before you actually do a calculation in that time you can use this one because this method will be called first and after that the calculate method will be called okay but we don't have such anything over here we are we are, we are looking at just simply a value difference we are considering so this method implementation is sufficient okay so what next to be done because as i told uh, we have now uh, our all the ui annotations capturing a metadata extension layer so unless until we update the metadata for duration obviously i cannot expect something in my front end will be reflecting so let's go back to our eclipse and we have to do this metadata extension for travel something we can put at the end of our memo memo is basically uh, this one so after this comment comment is basically our memo so after comment i want to put it back so what i want is now over here just simply copy it copy the enter value again and so duration should be uh, memo should be changed with the duration of course what happened duration and this position let's change it to 50 so that it doesn't get reflect and the comment or label let's say change it to travel duration okay something very simple i'm keeping it over here my uh, annotations been put for my metadata extension layer just get it activated and i think we all set so what we have to do now uh, simply you can go over here once more go back probably i can re restart once let's see if it now reflects because i would like to see the data should be reflecting if not then definitely something wrong voila so now you see the travel duration is reflecting with the difference with my end it and start it fantastic right so that pretty much and if you now let's say want to test our web api also let's see what it comes so this is our web api right and uh, because you see no preview button great so what you have to do just double click or oh, sorry double click will not work of course you have to click on service url and what we need to do at the end we can just check the the travel entity because there we are add we have added up in the consumption view and here you see the duration is now reflecting with the value awesome right so that pretty much uh, i just wanted to share i hope this uh, was helpful to you hope this helps stay tuned uh, for the next uh, connect and subscribe my channel if you are doing if you're in the first time in my channel and uh, set the bell icon of course to get intimated for the next release okay see you later thank you